Well, thank you for being here today for our press conference on what I describe as the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative to its importance in our country. And like many other issues, we're going to be deciding on November 5 what kind of a country we're going to be. And it applies to this issue as well. President Trump had withdrawn the U.S. from the WHO. And of course, the Biden administration, like every other disastrous decision they made, reversed those policies when uh, the Biden-Harris administration got in charge. Well, later this week, the U.N. is going to hold a, quote, summit for the future. And they're going to produce, this is right from their website, an intergovernmentally negotiated, action-oriented pact for the future with a chapter on transforming global governance. Ascending beyond the powers being sought by its subordinate agency, the WHO, the UN is seeking even broader and more powerful authority, as you will hear a lot about today. The Biden-Harris administration apparently intends to fully support the surrender and compliance of the U.S. to the UN in these endeavors. They are aligned with, aligned with the international globalists that hate America, that hate the Constitution, that hate our founders, that hate our founding Judeo-Christian principles, and they want America to become like the rest of the world. They don't want us to be subordinate to or governed by our Constitution. No, they want America to be subordinate to and governed by the UN, the World Health Assembly, and the WHO. And in fact, they intend to join with others at the UN summit this week to vote to award additional powers to the UN Secretary General. They seek to facilitate the evolution of the UN from an international cooperative body to an international governing body. These powers would be triggered by any one of a number of so-called global emergencies, whether it was a so-called climate emergency, a health emergency, a cyber emergency, or a gun violence emergency, whatever that's supposed to be, a financial emergency, or whatever they deem appropriate. And the Biden-Harris administration is in full agreement with the UN and the WHO on efforts to place us under their authority and require such things as their international health regulations, including the surveillance of U.S. citizens, the censoring of dissenting of views, and much more. The American people didn't vote for this, and they don't support this, and it's up to the people's representatives, that's us gathered here today, to have a responsibility to expose this and to reject this. The U.S. should defund the WHO again. We should withdraw from the WHO. Any agreements with the WHO or the U.N. should require Senate approval or disapproval. And a bipartisan House majority voted to require Senate approval just last week with Tom Tiffany's bill on the House floor. So I'm proud to be joined here by our House colleagues and others who are appropriately concerned and educated, informed, and leading on this issue. Again, this is the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative to its importance and its impact on our country and on the American people. And with that, I yield to the gentleman from South Carolina, Ralph Norman. Thank you, Congressman Good. Um, I want to thank Frank Gaffney, Tony Perkins, all my colleagues for taking a lead role in this. As Congressman Good, Good said, this is probably, other than our financial crisis this country's in, the most important issue to call attention to. Uh, the summit of the future will happen on September 22nd, 23rd. And folks, what that will do is cede America's authority, America's sovereignty to basically China. China is defined as a developing country. It is the number two economy behind America. It's not developing. It will cede our decision-making ability to China. That's what you need to know. Let me read out what uh, the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, his policy brief two issued on March of 2023. I propose that the General Assembly provide the Secretary General and the United Nations system with a standing authority to convene and operationalize automatically an emergency platform in the event of a future complex global shock of sufficient scale. Guess who determines that? The, the World Health Organization. It, it reveals in their definition a possible global, comp, a global shock including large cell climate or environmental events determined by who? The Secretary General. Future pandemics, we all noticed, all endured what the uh, problem we had 
with the latest virus. High impact events include involving a biological agent, determined by who? The World Health Organization. Disruption of global flows of goods, determined by who? Not America, but the WHO under the Secretary General. Not only that, it requires a 5% payment by the United States every year of our total medical dollars spent, which are in the trillions. Bottom line, we cannot let this go. This is a top line issue that America must be made aware of. It's got to go through the Senate where it requires 60 votes. And we're going to fight to make sure all Americans know what's happening and stop it dead in its tracks. The WHO needs to be defunded, needs to be do away, we need to do away with it, and America get out of it. I now call on Frank Gaffney with the Sovereignty Coalition. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you to all of those present. I wanted to most especially thank those who voted last week for H.R. 1425, which did exactly what Congressman Norman just talked about, requires the United States Senate to advise and, I hope, dissent on the kind of surrender of our sovereignty to global government that is envisioned both with respect to the World Health Organization and with respect now to the UN. That's, make no mistake about it, the agenda of the UN Summit of the Future. That is unmistakably what they hope to put in train with their so-called Pact of the Future. And the thing that is absolutely infuriating about all of this is not only, as these uh, gentlemen have said, this is really important. And most people in the media, most people in government, certainly the vast majority of Americans have no idea this is even going on, let alone reading in the rest of us. So it seems to me that what is needed now is not only to have the Senate charged, as with the World Health Organization's International Health Regulation Treaty, also the Pact for the Future. There must be no application of whatever they come up with in terms of world government by the UN Secretary General without the Senate's advice and consent. And secondly, I call here today on former President Donald Trump to use his platforms to address and draw out his opponent, the Vice President of the United States, on whether or not she supports world government. And if she doesn't, for her to disavow what the Biden administration is doing right now to try to bring it about. Thank you very much. Next up is Andy Biggs. Yes, sir. Thank you, Frank, and thanks to uh, Bob and, and Ralph uh, for organizing this and for all who are standing with us and my colleagues and uh, those who are concerned about this. You know, um, this administration has attacked United States sovereignty since day one. They've done it by attacking our geographical integrity, and now they want to cede our sovereignty over to the United Nations, and in particular, the World Health Organization. It's important to understand that how critical it is that we met, let the American people know how dangerous this administration is and their policies are. So, when we think about it, $850 million, that's our annual assessment today to the World Health Organization, but we consistently pay more than our assessment. Why is that? Because this administration wants to pay more. And we're the folks at the United Nations working hand in glove with the World Health Organization to have their way, we would be spending even more. And we'd be spending more to become enslaved to them because of the things that my previous uh, speakers, my uh, co-speakers have said. I introduced legislation, H.R. 2022, which gets us out of the World Health Organization and defunds our portion of it. Why is that? It's because the World Health Organization has become captured. It's been captured by our international adversary, China. We saw that as a result of the COVID-19 issue and how the World Health Organization protected Xi Jinping and the Chinese. We can't give up any more of our sovereignty any more of our geographical integrity, any more of our economic integrity to foreign actors who have no concern about the United States of America other than to take our power 
and our money away. This administration is all in for it. That should be enough to tell everyone that this is a non-starter. I appreciate my colleagues for helping raise this today. I appreciate you and the media being here today because this will be an ongoing effort. An ongoing effort as the out of control spending that Congress is engaged in, coupled with the border problems that we have, let's at least not turn over our health care apparatus to folks from a, a, a United Nations or an international multilateral institution that has no concern for us. So I thank you for being here. And now I yield to the gentlelady from Wyoming, my friend Harriet Hageman. Thank you. In my home state of Wyoming, we have common sense, something that seems to be sorely lacking in the Biden-Harris administration. Wyomingites that I have spoken with consistently ask why this administration would push to fund any organization that has clearly come under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. They wonder why Biden and Harris would try to enter into unconstitutional agreements with foreign entities that would force Americans to give up their sovereignty. It is worth noting that the bulk of the WHO's budget comes from voluntary contributions from multiple countries and organizations. Throughout the past decade, the United States has donated billions of taxpayer dollars, making us the WHO's largest financial contributor. Over this time, the CCP has exerted an expanded influence and corrupted the organization's data, research, and information sharing. Despite its abject failure, the organization is seeking greater control and greater funding while continuing to block legitimate investigations into the origins of COVID-19. On June 1st, the accord that amended the international health regulations was adopted by the World Health Assembly. While there are many concerning aspects of this accord, with its seating of our sovereignty being at the top of the list, it's, it obligates member states to address misinformation and disinformation. The result would be something that we have become all too familiar with under this administration, mandating, censoring, and sanctioning of speech and other actions that are at odds with the WHO Director General's deliberations. Of course, this is a clear violation of our constitutional rights, but Biden and Harris have never cared much for those. I have co-sponsored legislation introduced by Congressman Chip Roy, the No Taxpayer Funding for the World Health Organization Act, which would prohibit the U.S. from making any assessed or voluntary contributions to the WHO. International law does not trump the Constitution. Biden and Harris may be, may be compromised by the CCP, but they cannot force Americans to follow laws and regulations not passed by our own federal government. Thank you, and with that, I cede to Ronnie Jackson. Thank you. Well, I'd just like to start by saying as the physician, as a physician who's followed the WHO for many years now in my time in government during three presidential administrations and now as my time as a member of Congress, I can tell you that the WHO in particular and the UN in general do not represent what's best for this country. In fact, they do everything they can to undermine us and defeat us. Look at what happened during COVID as a perfect example. During COVID, they lied to us and they worked with China to cover up the origins of COVID. You have to ask yourself, do you really want, next time this happens, for the WHO to decide how taxpayer dollars in this country are spent, to decide what resources we are and are not eligible for, despite the fact that we overwhelmingly fund their operations? That's what you're asked. That's what you're going to get. And as my colleague, uh, Mr. Good, pointed out, they can define an emergency in any way they want. And believe me, it will be creative and it won't be a health care crisis again next time. It'll be something related to the climate or gun control or some other woke agenda that they have on their radar. This IHR treaty is nothing more than a redistribution of wealth and government control via global governance. This fits right into the communist and socialist ideology that, that defines today's Democrat Party in this country. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and their administration would like nothing more than to pass their responsibility to protect this country's health and livelihood to another country, many of which do not appreciate the United States, do not like the United States, and many of which are hostile to the United States. They would love nothing more than to pass this responsibility to these countries. I am a firm believer, a firm believer, that from this point forward, we should never give another penny to the World Health Organization. They have not represented us well. They never have and they never will. They are not an ally to this country. They are not an asset to this country. We should not be paying hard, 
earned taxpayer dollars for their efforts that are oftentimes against us. With regards to the United Nations, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think the best thing we could do for the United Nations is to go to New York and push the entire thing off into the East River. And with that, I turn it over to Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Well, we're here today to rain on uh, the WHO's parade as they uh, march for power. I, I, I think the WHO, if we were here about six months ago, similar press conference prior to their June meeting in Geneva where they tried to gain international support for their pandemic accord, which they did not do. And, I, and I'm, I'm becoming convinced that the WHO thinks that the rest of us have brain fog from COVID and they're just gonna keep trying this over and over again. But the facts do not change. This is a global power grab. And when you look at the, the various aspects that this would touch, in particular that have been touched on that are very concerning is their focus on so-called disinformation. What we recently saw in Brazil with X is a prime example of what governments would be doing being empowered by the WHO's pandemic accord, calling on governments to silence and censor dissenting voices. You know, in America, we cherish the First Amendment. We cherish our freedom and we cherish our families. Both are endangered under this pandemic accord. And I echo the calls here today, number one, to defund the WHO and get the United States out of it. But secondly, any, any agreement that is advanced by this administra administration signed on to should be submitted to the Senate for ratification and be treated as it is as a treaty. So I thank these members of Congress for continuing to bring attention to this. While many ignore it, the WHO continues their march for power and they will not stop it's going to be incumbent upon this Congress, this institution, stopping and protecting the American public from the WHO. And with that, I turn it over. Is Chip here? Reggie, Little John. Reggie Little John, co-founder of Sovereignty Coalition and president of Anti Globus International. Thank you to representatives Bob Good and Ralph Norman and my other colleagues here, including my co-chair, uh, Frank Gaffney, for organizing this press conference. 1425 was an outstanding victory, which can prevent uh, the de depredations of the World Health Organization from moving forward without Senate consent. But we need a, an equally strong measure in, in respect to the United Nations. The United Nations Pact for the Future is going to be the deliverable at the Summit for the Future, which is this weekend, and nobody knows about it. So in the Summit for the Future, they are going to approve a, a, um, a platform, an emergency platform that will operationalize automatically in the case of a complex global shock. What does it mean to operationalize automatically? It means that once they have passed it through the United Nations, they don't have to ask other countries to approve it. They will just go forward with their protocols. And how did they approve this? It's being adopted by something called the silence procedure. The silence procedure, this is a pact. A pact is a form of treaty. It's supposed to go through the ratification process internationally. Instead, they're doing it where they submit a draft and if nobody objects to it, then it's adopted. Adopted, and then it's noted that it was adopted at the actual summit for the future. So. This is absolutely unconstitutional. Not only that, it's, it's against the charter of the United Nations. They are trying to expand their powers. They're doing an end run around their own ch charter through the silence procedure. We need to raise the alarm about this and we need to stop it. Thank you. Next one is Representative Eli Crane. All right, thank you guys for coming out today to cover this. I want to say thank you to uh, Congressman Good, Norman, uh, for hosting this, and my other colleagues for showing up. Um, obviously, this is a complete disaster. I'm not surprised at all that this administration is supporting it. Um, they've completely betrayed us on our southern border, and it looks like they're attempting to sell out our sovereignty once again with this agreement. I just want to read what my colleague, Congressman uh, Norman, read. Uh, this is from Gutierrez. 
I propose that the General Assembly provide the Secretary General and the United Nations system with a standing authority to convene and operationalize automatically an emergency platform in the event of future complex global shock of sufficient scale, severity, and reach. The key word there is authority. That's what these globalists want. They want authority. They want to strip it away from what we have here and the representatives that we have here that represent the people of this country, though none of them were elected by anyone in this country. And what do they want authority over? Because it's not just pan the next pandemic, all right? Large scale climate or environmental ev events. Wow, they could be real creative with that one. Future pandemics, high impact events involving a biological agent, disruptions to global flows of goods, people, or finance, disruptive activity in cyberspace or disruption to global digital connectivity, major event in outer space or black swan events. That's enough examples and enough reasons for them to get involved pretty much whenever and wherever they want to. And I hope that this body and the Senate continues to reject, push back and stop this agreement and this push by this administration to sell out our sovereignty to globalists. Thank you. Next up is Chris Ullman, Eagle Forum. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Chris Ullman, the president of Eagle Forum. I'm delighted to be here. We're a grassroots organization of patriots who love this Constitution. Today is September 17th. Today is Constitution Day, the day when all Americans should study the Constitution and learn about it. And I am so grateful for this opportunity to have this press conference today when we're talking about the WHO and the UN and what they're trying to do to take our sovereignty away and I'm grateful for these members of Congress who are standing up to do their constitutional duty to be the legislative branch to decide what our laws are and what laws the American people will live under. The United Nations and the WHO want to become the lawmaking body to tell us what to do. And these members of Congress last week took a step to say, no, it's our job to make the laws not the UN and not the WHO. Uh, the Senate, there are 49 senators who have signed on to a companion bill that requires the same constitutional advice and consent. We have 26 governors who have also spoken out on this as well as attorneys general. So we're delighted on Constitution Day that this body is taking the first step to get us back to constitutional order. Thank you very much. And now I turn it over to Representatives Norman and Good for questions. Harry, two questions. Anyone? Yes, sir. Well, I'd say what it has on future elections is bigger than that. It's what it has on the future of this country. I mean, this is a dictatorship. This is, you know, this administration, by its actions when it first took office, had executive orders that were supposed to be temporary during the term of his office, like the border. It's, you know, to reverse that, to walk that back, is going to take a massive effort. This will take the same massive effort. If he votes this in, does not take it to the Senate, uh, we'll cede our sovereignty. We cannot do it. The American people do not want that. That's not what a democracy is all about, and particularly with China. China is our enemy, and to cede it to basically to them is unacceptable, particularly with the COVID virus. I'll just add to what Congressman Norman said, that you saw the Biden-Harris administration on full display during the China virus situation where they doubled down and took every recommendation from the WHO we had to force them, literally, the Republican House had to force them to finally end the pandemic emergency and the, the so-called mitigation uh, requirements that were in place. So hopefully the American people learn from that. They've suffered sufficiently, and they're going to make change on November 5. One more. All right. That one, one thing to that last point. Uh, when you talk about elections, the founders had a very important insight. You want people voting who are informed. We are here to talk to you and through you to the American people to ensure 
they are informed because the process that we're talking about could functionally end the whole idea of limited, accountable, and representative governance of this country under our Constitution. That must not be allowed to happen. And I thank these gentlemen and their colleagues for trying to prevent it from happening. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank, thank you all you. so much.